So if you're building on a Next.js application, there is one hook that you definitely need to understand if you want your applications to be as performant as you possibly can make them. So we have this application here. This is my uh, Next.js starter kit I've been working on that I'll never finish. But if I go ahead and refresh the page, I want to show you that over on the terminal, it calls get current user multiple times. Okay, now what get current user is doing is basically verifying that the user is logged in and getting their session. So this has to do a database request using their session ID, probably gets the session from the database and then returns that here. Obviously, you don't want to have this called over seven times because that's inefficient, right? And to kind of visualize why that's happening, I can kind of walk you through it. So we have our React application and this could be our header. Over here, we might have um, the body, which I'm gonna call this a group header, which is going to be basically this part here. And then over here we have, you know, the child, which is like the panel. So I'll just go ahead and say, this could be a panel. And so remember, this is a tree, right? This is a tree where you have like your root layout here. This is your root layout. Your root layout is going to render different components. So for example, I have a header and then that probably has a child. So when I go to that groups page, there's another layout. I'll call it like the groups layout. And that renders out a group header and then also renders out some children for the panel. Now, all of these need to figure out if the user is logged in because different buttons on the page, for example, this leave group button shouldn't show up unless you're logged in. Um, other things need to check to make sure you're even authenticated. If you're on the events page, maybe you're an admin, we need to verify we can show a button or modal to be able to create the event. So as the RSC is like diving through your DOM tree and rendering all these components, all of these have to keep calling get current user. Okay, now I put a fake delay of one second inside of this just to kind of show, but it's not very uh, efficient, right? All of these have to keep calling get current user. Maybe the root layout calls get current user. This panel definitely calls it. And so you have all these different things, one, two, three, four, five. I'm guessing there's other places I'm calling as well. Maybe there's like smaller components in here that need to check. But that's the point of React Server components is that you can break up your components into smaller pieces and all of them can just fetch the data that they need in order to get this uh, page shown properly, right? But as you can tell, this is extremely problematic because all of these function calls are gonna call the database seven times. Super slow, not very performant, especially if your database is on a separate server than like your Next.js app. That's, that's wasteful. So how do you fix this? It's actually really, really simple. Um, basically, there is a cache method that comes from the React library, okay? And if you wrap whatever function with this cache method, now, next time I load this page, notice that it only calls get current user once, which is awesome because now instead of all of these different things trying to request the current user, it's just one of them. Now, which one actually wins? It doesn't really matter. The thing is that all of these are gonna wait until the first one resolves and then they can all just share that same cached uh, promise when it resolves. So after pointing that out, you might ask, well, how does that cached value get removed? Well, it turns out that the cache method is only caching per request. So every user who comes in here and makes a request to render out this page, it's going to clear out this cached value and recall this method. Okay, I don't know how to actually visualize that with a graph, but just, just know that every single request, it's cleared out. So the caching is per request. So if I go here and just basically refresh this page again, you'll see it makes another call to get current user. If I do it again, the fresh call to get current user. So definitely if you're doing like some session lookups, you need to wrap your stuff in a cache call, but also make sure you understand your component tree and what things are being fetched as it's like rendering out your components because you don't want to over fetch the same data over and over again. And that's something that you could easily do when you're dealing with this uh, new paradigm of React server components. But again, it's like a super simple fix just by using this cache method. Now, hold on, the very last thing I wanna point out is that there is another method called unstable cache. This is a function that comes from next cache. Do not confuse cache with the unstable cache. They're completely different. Unstable cache will actually cache per multiple requests. So you can choose a value and you can choose how long you want it to cache for. So 
for example, I could do like a function here uh, that returns like hello key parts. You can just you can uh, I think over here you can just put like a key. So I could say like my hello cache. And then also at the very end of this, you can add a revalidate period. So I can say like, I don't know, 60 seconds or something. I don't know if it's in seconds or milliseconds, but so it'll look kind of like this. I think I might have a syntax error, but do not confuse what I just taught you with this, because this is actually caching a value amongst all requests, which you probably don't want unless you're very, very cautious about what you're trying to do. All right, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. Happy coding.